Timothy draws the line from where conduct becomes maybe just a little bit unethical to actually illegal. Well, I think one of the issues here is up to this point in time, Vani, the, the investigation is focused on, we presume, based on the leaks that have come out, collusion between the Trump presidential campaign and the Kremlin. I think in the person of Jared Kushner, you find this extending into a new area. Um, one of the signature Kushner properties, 666 Fifth Avenue, is a troubled property. It needs to be re refinanced. It has debt problems. And Kushner spent the better part of last year trying to lobby uh, a major Chinese insurer, Anbang, to invest in the building and, and, and get him out of this debt trap. Um, that deal recently blew up. Um, but along the way, last December, he was introduced by the Russian ambassador, Sergei Kislyak, to uh, the head of Vinesh Ekonom Bank, or VEB, which is one of the biggest banks in Russia. We don't know what they talked about, but we do know this was during a time period when he had concerns about the finances of the building. So a question would be, uh, did he talk to the bank about 666 Fifth Avenue? In the context of that conversation, did he also talk about the possibility of lifting sanctions mm. on Russia? Uh, Russia's been under sanctions, as is the bank that Kushner spoke with, uh, because of Vladimir Putin's incursions in the Crimea. So you have this whole confluence of policy making and deal making. Tim, do we know yet, or will we know, if he's been subpoenaed? Uh, I'm, you know, based, based only on the reporting I've read, uh, it doesn't appear that he's a, a received grand jury subpoenas uh, like Paul Manafort has uh, and like Michael Flynn has. So it, it, it would appear that whatever he's being looked at is apart from what they did. Nonetheless, it brings this investigation right into the Oval Office. Tim, I mean, is this further ammo for those who believe that the Trumps and Kushners have been playing, let's call it, which you called it in your article, fast and loose with the norms and ethics of conflicts of interest standards? Well, I think it does, you know, and, and one of the issues that has come up is that they've chosen not to, they've chosen to ignore some of those norms. Uh, the president has, as has Ivanka and Trump and Jared Kushner in particular. And uh, because these guidelines are fairly fluid, uh, it, it's really an ethical issue mo in most cases. Mm. What's happened, though, is because they've treated these things so fluidly, it's now become part of an FBI investigation. And they could, they could have some problems with that. Right, and Tim, it's been a very difficult week PR-wise for Jared Kushner. It's coming on top of, a, you know, an article in the New York Times which essentially called him a slumlord in places like Baltimore and other places where thousands of properties are being, you know, harassed and hounded, the property owners, for, for, for past due rent, even if it's just small amounts. Does he need to worry about, his, you know, optics? Well, I think they all need to worry about optics. I, I, I don't know how well this group of people thought through what they were taking on when they pursued the White House and then when they obviously entered the White House. To a certain extent, we've seen it. It's been amateur hour in Washington with a lot of people in the Trump administration, a lack of experience, a lack of concern about optics, and clearly, clearly a lack of concern about clearly dividing their deal-making from public policy making. 